Gauss Jordan elimination generates values in systems of linear equations without any substitution. Check how it works here in numerical solutions to see problems. A reduced row echelon form is created for Gauss-Jordan elimination. That is, the main diagonal elements are valued as 1, but all the other coefficients are 0. Again, take note that the first column is x, the second is y, and the third column right before the bar is z. Although this method takes a little longer to complete, it is easier to identify the variables after. If we focus on the first row, we get 1 times x is equal to c, which can be simplified as x equal to c. The second row shows 1y is equal to d, or that says that the y value is d. And the third row is equal to e, simplified as z equal to e. Let's have an example to apply the concept. With the following equations, 3x less 9z is equal to 33, then 7x minus 4y less z is equal to negative 15, and 4x plus 6y plus 5z is equal to negative 6, let's look for the values of x, y, and z using Gauss-Jordan elimination. We start by converting the equations into an augmented matrix, where coefficients are separated from the constants. Then we proceed with the elimination by creating a pivot element placed at element A11. In this case, we choose the first row to be the pivot row 2, and then we create 1 for the first element. That can be done by dividing the whole row by 3. So take 3 divided by 3 to have 1. 0 divided by 3 is 0. Negative 9 divided by 3 is negative 3, and 33 divided by 3 is 11. Those are the new values of the first row, but the rest remains the same. Next is to zero out all the other elements in the first column, and we start from element 2, 1. The pivot element's job is to zero out the other elements in its column. So by comparing elements, we can devise the formula for the row update. In this example, we use row 2 minus 7 times row 1 and have this as the new row 2. So for element 2, 1, 7 minus 7 times 1 is equal to 0. Element 2, 2 is negative 4 minus 7 times 0 and it is equal to negative 4. Then for element 2, 3, we have negative 1 minus 7 times negative 3 as 20. And the constant element is negative 15 minus 7 times 11 gives negative 92. Now we can also zero out the last element from the first column. And we can use the formula row 3 minus 4 times row 1 for the new row 3. Element 3, 1 gets 4 minus 4 times 1 to have 0. Element 3, 2 has 6, minus 4 times 0, giving 6. The next element, A3, 3, has 5, minus 4 times negative 3, simplified as 17. And the constant is computed as negative 6, minus 4 times 11, showing negative 50. We are off to work on the second column. From the updated elements, we need to find the pivot element but do not need to zero out element 1, 2 as it is already zero, so it cuts the work a little shorter. In determining the pivot row, we can choose between rows 2 and 3. If we look closely, we can see that row 2 can actually be reduced as all non-zero elements are multiples of 4, 
so that is what we are going to do. Let's simplify row 2 by dividing it by negative 4. With element 2, 1, we compute 0 divided by negative 4 but still have 0. Element 2, 2 will be negative 4 divided by negative 4 to get 1. Then element 2, 3 next, showing 20 divided by negative 4 resulting to negative 5. Then to complete the row, the constant has negative 92, and we divide this by negative 4 to give the updated constant positive 23. Now zero out the remaining elements in column 2, as we have only element 3, 2. We can do this by taking row 3 minus 6 times row 2 for our new row 3. So for element 3, 1, we have 0, less 6 times 0, giving 0. For element 3, 2, we have 6, then we subtract 6 times 1 to end up to 0. Then at element 3, 3, we have 17, then subtract 6 times negative 5 to have 47. And lastly, for the constant element, we have negative 50, where we subtract 6 times 23 to get negative 188. Now column 2 is complete. Moving to the last column, we create a pivot element for the last row and we place the pivot element at element 3, 3. To reduce the pivot element to 1, we divide row 3 by 47. So at element 3, 1, we compute 0, divided by 47 to get 0. Element 3, 2 is similar with 0 divided by 47, again to give 0. Then, for element 3, 3, we have 47 divided by 47, and that is 1. And the constant element has negative 188, which we divide by 47 to get negative 4. Now that we have identified the pivot element for the last column, we can zero out the other elements in that column. Moving up to zero out the element above the last pivot row, we use the formula row 2 plus 5 times row 3 for the updated row 2. With element 2, 1, we have 0 plus 5 times 0, and still we have 0. At element 2, 2, we have 1 plus 5 times 0 to keep 1. Then at element 2, 3, we have negative 5 plus 5 times 1 to get 0. And also, for the constant, we have 23, where we add 5 times negative 4 to give 3. For the last step in creating a reduced row echelon form, we zero out element 1, 3, and that is done by taking row 1 and adding 3 times row 3 to make a new row 1. Starting with element 1, 1, we have 1, then add 3 times 0 to keep 1. Then at element 1, 2, we have 0, then add 3 times 0 to come up with 0. Next is at element 1, 3, which has negative 3. Then we add 3 times 1 to give 0. And for the constant, we have 11 plus thrice of negative 4 to turn out as negative 1. At this point, we can now determine the variables x, y, and z. From row 1, we have 1 times x plus 0y and 0z, which would turn as negative 1, simplified as x equal to negative 1. The second row also shows y equal to 3. Then, the last row has z, which is equal to negative 4. Mm -hmm.